Hey everybody, this is Perch, and um, I'm outside for a walk. It's been a while since I've done this. It's actually nice to get back out. Strangely, it's not like 98 degrees here. I, uh, you know, I, I'm just wired. I have this picture in my head. I'll never live there, uh, but I have this picture in my head that I will live in like some small fishing town, like in northern Alaska. You know, I'd grow a big beard and just that that's the future for me. Anybody who's seen me in real life knows how absurd that sounds, but it's that that's my that's my world. Um, this you know, excessive heat. I always hate the summers. I just I'm not I'm not bred for that. Anyway, um, comic companies, comic publishers, they really need to try more new things. And it's a little bit weird to watch when you see a book like kind of uh, you know I am not Starfire come out. And you look at it, or at least I do. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I look at it and I go, okay, so A plus for trying something out of the box, something different, trying to, to grab that new audience. You know, that's the spirit of that actually was was good. Um, I do think I, I, all the same arguments apply. I think there's a, you know a negligent in keeping the audience they already have, or maybe reaching out to the audience that was one time was. 100,000 plus copies for every comic sold. You know, interesting kind of side bit. There's, uh, I see speculation, and I'm in some retailer groups and some groups that have creators. And there's a lot of people kind of wondering, speculating, and making up reasons for why a Tinian's Batman is selling better than King's Batman. And I, I've poked a few times, or I've, I've mentioned a few times in these groups, and people always like, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. But it's weird to me to see people really trying to kind of speculate on how, why is it that Tinian's book is doing better? And it's like, well, uh, it's it's super obvious, actually. He's introducing new characters, so there's a lot of new IP. First time, that's always boost interest. He's telling, in many cases, classic Batman stories, meaning they're stories that are kind of Batman adventure. It's it's Batman needs to solve something and he's got to do some action and villains are going to kind of get him and there's a threat and then it's better. Like that's, that's, that's what we see in, in the Batman books. Um, it very much, it, you know, it's, it's not the same story that was told in the eighties and nineties, but in many cases it is the same feel. It's an action adventure book starring Batman and there's new characters, and we're using a lot of, you know, we use Joker right out the gate for Joker War, and all of those things translate to being, you know, long-term customer friendly. Now, there's a lot of people who may not like those books and may dislike where he's going with it. I don't like the Magistrate bit at all, but this book is a safer bet than, say, what Tom King was doing, which is more introspective, Batman learning about his relationship, and He's dealing with depression and, and Catwoman and just uh, a lot of that kind of stuff um, doesn't sell well to a traditional audience that buys Batman. Go figure. So anyway, I got off track a little bit. But you, you take a look at uh, Starfire or some of these other titles that come out. And on one hand, you go, all right, well, they're trying something. And God knows comic books need to try something. But the efforts that they try feel extremely tired. That's probably the best way to put it. I don't know a way to kind of say it in a in a different way. And I don't mean it as insulting to comic industry. I know there's creators who come in here and it's like negative, negative, negative. And I'm not I'm not trying to present it that way. But I here's where I'd, I'd ask: just kind of take a step back if you can. Look at it from a thirty thousand you know foot perspective and look down at the industry, not down. Just look at an overview of the industry. And here, here's a takeaway to consider. Everybody seems tired. The efforts feel very half-assed. And when I say that, I don't, I, I'm not trying to get into the specifics of this person's lazy or that person's lazy, but more just look at like when there's a new book. The marketing, it rolls. It looks very kind of like somebody filled out, you know, took a previous press release and kind of changed the words around and put it back out again. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking for me because I see at times amazing, stunning art, really tremendous kind of uh, you know detailed pages and artists of all different styles putting time and effort into books. Not all books, but but a lot of books. And I I know that there's writers out there very proud of the stories they're putting together, these these things, these worlds that they're crafting, everything else. But comic books in general, the impression you get as a customer is that everybody's tired. 
everybody's like, eh, this isn't what I really wanted to be doing with my life, but here we are. Or, man, I'm tired. This COVID thing's been going on forever, so I'm just, I'm, I'm exhausted. Here's a, here's your comic. Nothing feels like a very inspired effort. Not nothing. Every now and then, you do see some comics come out that do feel like the creator's really behind them and they're inspired and it's like, hey, I'm doing some stuff. And miraculously, every single time that happens, for a wide variety of genres, whether it's, uh, you know, what Tinian's doing on Batman or whether it's uh, Snyder doing his Noctera book or, I mean, look at the excitement that Sean Murphy gets for White Knight. And we haven't had a White Knight for a little while, right? It's, it's we're waiting for that next volume. He comes on the stream, he sounds excited. Jeff Thorne comes on the streams, he sounds excited. And what do you know, people who weren't going to pick up Green Lantern are buying Green Lantern. People who are like, ah, no way, it's not Hal Jordan and it's disrespectful. No. And they're buying it. Now part of why they're buying it is because of the attitude and the, the feeling you get from the creator. Now Jeff Thorne coming on this channel uh, with a you know small audience. I mean, compared to DC's audience, uh, it's a no jokes, please. It's a it's a small audience, and yet he is able to get people who, in some cases, were predisposed not to like his book because they feel like we're disrespecting Hal Jordan, and people are like you know what I'm excited about that book. Now imagine if you could take that same excitement of the creator again when you listen to Jeff, he sounds like he's excited about the book he's doing. But does the company, does the publisher seem excited about the comic they're producing? You know, Green Lantern's coming out. Do, do, you know, remember how people used to make fun of Stan Lee for feeling like an over-the-top pitch man that he was like, hey, true believers. And, and it, it, was, it was over the top. Who's doing that today? Where is this feeling that people are actually into the product they're selling? Yes, there are tweets out there where, um, I don't know, Michael Conrad will say, this is the best Wonder Woman I've ever done in my life. I mean, cool. But uh, that, that, that isn't carrying into the comic. It isn't carrying into the publisher. In fact, if anything, the publisher, in this case the Marvel and DC, feels somewhat exhausted by the product they're putting out. And I, I think that there, it's, it's, it's weird. There's been times in comics where as a customer, you were really psyched for what was coming. You were really, you, it just, there was some neat stuff that was, uh, that looked like it was going to get shipped and you were, you were into it. You were excited. Today, it feels, again, as a retailer, as a customer, it just feels kind of tired. It feels like, well, it's October, slightly different from September. And November will come up, and there'll be some new books, and oh, we got some variants, and I'm sure some are good. But it's almost like uh, one of the problems that the 90s had, and then later kind of nostalgia in the 90s had, was this kind of too cool for school kind of sarcastic view of things. Like, I can't get too excited about So If I show that I'm excited about something, yeah, that's, that's nerdy or geeky, or I'm going to be seen as a fanboy. But if you look at the history of comics, whenever the companies have embraced being fanboys, being very excited about their product, it's tended to do better. It's tended to help. When the companies uh, take this kind of blasé, nah, we've got some comics, you can read them if you want, then everything starts to just get tired. So forget everything else. The writers, the creators, I mean, there's lots that can be said, and people do say all the time about this art style or that art style or what this creator is saying or, or doing or whatever it happens to be, the general excitement around comics from the publishers themselves feels extremely subdued. It feels like just people are kind of doing this because they have to or they're in this job because, you know, they, they don't want to go work at Starbucks, so I guess we'll do this job. That's the, that's the attitude that's being conveyed. Now, if you're a creator and you're just hating all this, or you're a publisher and you're hating what you're hearing, um, keep in mind, I'm excited about comics. As I mentioned, many of your creators, your writers are excited about comics. Ones I like, ones I don't like are, are hyping up and being excited about what's going on. But this isn't an isolated thing. This isn't just me saying this. A lot of people, uh, retailers, 
um, people who are, you know, not angry, outrage YouTubers, many, many people are saying they don't feel the excitement. They feel, you know, that it's just kind of meh, passive is the best word. Everything feels passive. And when you're a comic book publisher who's publishing fantasy stories about the most powerful beings in the universe, fighting the most deadly villains in the universe, passive is not the word you want to hear. Passive is, is death. And I think that, that if, if, I'm, if I was working at Marvel and DC or Image or some of these companies, the question I'd be asking myself is, why aren't people feeling more of the excitement? And then I ask myself a tougher question. Do I feel excited? As a publisher, am I interested in any of this stuff? If the answer is no, then okay, we need, you know, time to solve that. Got to get some, got to be, we got to feel good about our own product. We can't go out there and hawk something we don't even care about. But let's assume for the moment that the people within Marvel DC, the Tom Brevoort's, the editorial, the David Gabriel's, the Jim Lee's, the Marie Javins, the whoever, let's assume you're super excited about the product. You're actually passionate about it. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a disconnect. Your passion is not getting picked up by your consumers or your retailers. It's not being felt. So why not? What's missing? What are things that can be done to help connect the dots between your excitement and the market? You know, maybe it's as simple as, you know, one tiny little piece of this. If you read the solicitations, like I do, I show them, note, like, the person writing the solicitations sounds bored out of their minds describing these comics. They do not sound hyped. It sounds like somebody's homework assignment at 11 p.m. on a Sunday night before the next day, and they are just miserable having to do it. That's how the solicitations come across. So how do you generate excitement? Because you're putting out a product you want people to be excited about, but that excitement's not getting communicated. That's the question I would ask myself. I'm not, I'm not in your offices. You can easily dismiss this as one more YouTube crank who doesn't know what he's talking about. But that, that is the sense that is missing, in my view anyway. What do you guys think? Am I, anybody else share this? It's, a, it's weird because you see a lot of people who, who want to get outraged or want to get angry. But the biggest feeling that I see more often than not is apathy. And to me, apathy is worse. It's, it's a non-emotion. You know, love or outrage at least is, you know, people are getting heated about it. But apathy, apathy sucks. Thanks for listening.